entire time, which I think is really, really cool to watch. And uh, it's I like to do in my own climbing. You know, when I see a route, I try to air climb a little bit. But what's have to go for it? And he jumps over. Oh. Yep. You, on these types of moves, you really want to over jump. Is kind of what I say in my head, um, because you know the last thing you want to do is is not get there. You'd rather come down onto it than you know come up short. Uh, and so that's definitely what we saw him do there. He probably over jumped for that move. That was so much bigger than I thought that move was in my head as yeah. well. It's kind of a proper running jump. Yeah, it really is. Boulder Star Elite. Well, Mejdi, thank goodness, is on the wall. <laughs> Makes a double clip to start things off. I kind of like when a lead climb starts with the dino because, uh, you know, you can stand on the ground for up to 40 seconds to read the route again uh, and kind of familiarize yourself with the bottom, especially again. Um, but this kind of makes you have to start climbing immediately. You can't really hesitate, and it just puts you straight in that zone, uh, which I actually really like. So it's a little bit nerve-wracking, but it is it gets you climbing immediately. I think that says a lot about your style, that, <laughs> that passion to get going, because I know that some athletes find it terrifying when there's a dodgy start or something. They just want to get safely on the wall. Definitely. Well, Mejdi is underway here through the blue part of the wall, and then you traverse towards the right. And this is the first kind of really tricky move. This yeah, that looked looked uh, hard with the feet. These World Cup routes really don't like to give you many feet options. You have to either track and put your feet on the handholds, um, or like you can see, there's just kind of one singular foothold out to the side over there and uh, on the pink volume. But otherwise, you really have to be creative with your footwork and be comfortable in these really uncomfortable positions. You can see Mejdi is doing a really good job of that with you know, really relaxing into the positions as soon as he gets into them. Like that looked really strenuous, but then as soon as he got there, he really relaxed. And he is in probably the best rest of this route when you undercling it. The thing is though, you're so early on, you don't want to rest too much at this point. And he doesn't, goes straight through. And now enters the crimps. Yeah, this looks like a pretty thin section for sure. Um, you know, all these men have such strong fingers though, but... Oh! oh. But Mejdi falls on the so he's on a good run of form at the moment. Yeah, he's also in an all-around form. I feel like that we're seeing a lot of athletes get in for, uh, you know, the upcoming Olympic cycle. Yeah, that does begin. Paris 2024, a lot of people are beginning to talk about it. And he's nicely underway, pressing back with that right hand. Now these volumes, too, can be kind of hard to read, um, just because you don't exactly know how they're going to feel until you get there. Um, and also this, the, the distance between the foot and the hand, it just makes that volume feel that much worse or that much better. And it's a strange series of moves, isn't it? After that jump, sort of hugging this big black volume. It's an odd way to begin a World Cup. Yeah, none of these positions look particularly comfortable. And then these pinches are much worse than they look as well. Um, and so they really like to keep you uncomfortable on these routes. And kind of something that I've been realizing even uh, competing in the last couple of competitions is that you just have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Like, just assume what you're doing is the right thing because there's no time to really question it. That's such a good point. I mean, when we climb in commercial gyms, kind of you look for the flow and uh, how it feels with this stuff. It's just difficult, a bit nasty. Yeah. It doesn't really matter how it feels in the end. It just matters how far you get, you know, so. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're just questioning how it's feeling the whole time, it, it's just going to make you uh, climb worse. So He's styling this section, though. He really is, yeah. And that blocked crib just designed by the root setters to make I mean you have to be more accurate on it with that right hand. Looking like he's really trying to chill here. Like you really want to take advantage of those good feet like this one. Yeah, you can see that foot he's standing on. The only thing on that purple volume bumps it across and he's underneath in this rest. I really twisted around the rope there, kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> fix that. And a lot of times, actually, why they block these crimps like this is, you know, that's a pretty static move. It's actually to prevent heel hooks um, because a lot of lead climbers especially are so good at heel hooks that they can heel hook anything and find a rest. Uh, and so you'll see root setters do this so that uh, climbers can't get those heel hook rests. Although I've seen people break that beta before moves that root setters are like, it's impossible. And then you watch <laughs> someone do it. It's, you're right. It's incredible what they can do with it's the heels. It's true, especially as soon as, you know, the athletes get this good. Uh, you'll see a lot of beta that people maybe didn't intend or anticipate. But Taisai is going to have to work here. We saw from Mejdi how small these crimps are. Yeah, he's approaching this crux, it looks like. Oh, and he bumps the left. Now, I think he's got a heel locked in or a toe, toe on yeah, the right. It's probably a toe, yeah, that gives you a little bit more distance. Um, and I think Mejdi was kind of stuck in the heel, and once he got that far, he couldn't really change it. Well, Taisai is through that initial yeah. crux. That was really good beta through there. He made it look really smooth. He thought about it for a long time. You could see him sizing up the move. So often when athletes do that, it's because they've got a problem, but I actually think he was just reading it. 
I think you're right. I think he was debating which hand to go with. Uh, and that's actually something that's really important while you're on these routes is to take a moment to think when you do have the ability to. Uh, you want to flow through the sections that you don't have to think um, and then like stay really present. But then if you have the ability to look ahead, really try and look ahead and, and use those rests. This section is looking really hard. It is, isn't it? He's got that left locked in on the tip marked crimp or jib on the volume. And these dishes are super shallow, um, so you really can't you know, cut feet or anything on these. You have to stay really tight and keep a lot of tension. It looks like it's in the sun there. It's more the spotlight that is causing that light. So he's okay in terms of friction. But yeah, look how horrible that left dish is. Nasty hold. Yeah, he's resting on it. So <laughs> <laughs> no. That's like, again, he has that heel hook in. It just makes, you can take so much weight off your hands if you're good at those. Uh, and, it, and that's why you see so many lead climbers use so many heel hooks. Tyson Homer is putting a good performance up to the last of the dishes just underneath the head wall. He needs to work out his cliff, and I think he's pump is he pumping out or is he just trying to find a better position? I think he's trying to find a better position. That was smart. You know, sometimes you see people trying to clip too early and then fall on the move. So it's better to do the move and then clip if you're able to clip afterwards. He's getting all the way up into the head wall here now. Yeah, rocking up. And once he gets stood up, the weight will go off his arms a little bit. But look at the dual texture, yeah. shiny surface on these holds. They're really fighting through this section. Oh. Big high left foot, that shoulder muscle screaming. And then as soon as you're in this perch, you're chilling again. It's really crazy how that works sometimes. You have to work so hard to get into that position. And then as soon as you're there, you can just take a huge deep breath, which we just saw him do. Yeah, it gets more vertical up there. No longer overhanging, or not as overhanging. And he's close, but the final part of this route will test everyone. Dances those feet out, gets split high up on the wall. Oh. Skipping the clip, going for the move instead, always a smart move, especially when you're tired. And there we go, yeah, Kara called it. So, go on, why do athletes do that? Because So many people chalking up kind of aggressively when they're... Um, oh, going for the static method there. Yeah, he thought about it, didn't he? He's going to have to jump low. Oof. Does the jump. And then just <laughs> hangs off with one arm casually. Oh, but this is quite a long way for him. He has to generate a bit of swing. Yeah, there we go. Presses through now. So out is up on the wall, underway, and he'll make that first clip. Yeah, kind of an awkward clip, that first one, with the, the big first hold there, kind of in your way. Yeah, then you need to come all the way under that volume, and it, it's an unsettling start for the men. Definitely. Well, that's our leaderboard on the left, so you can see where Mejdi Shalk is, and then Taisai Helmut, 36 plus, is all the way at the top, and that number one position. That's where Al will be aiming for, but of course Al does not know where these athletes ended up, so all he thinks about is climbing as far as possible. Yeah, you can sometimes get an idea of that based on how long the person before you took. Um, you know, some athletes pay attention to that, some athletes try not to, uh, but you definitely have some idea going into it no matter what. You know, if it's been two minutes and then you're right back on the wall, uh, you kind of know somebody maybe fell lower, but if it's been almost six minutes, then you, you know that they either stalled out somewhere or got really high. Yeah, the crowd cheering is a giveaway as also well when you're that, back. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of athletes actually also wear um, headphones. I don't know if it's okay. to block out that crowd, crowd noise or to um, you know, kind of get in the zone. I used to do it to block out the crowd noise, and now I do it to get in the zone. What's so. Kyra Condi's hype music? Uh, it's actually opera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of too excitable of a person to begin with, so I can't get too hyped before a competition because I need to calm down usually, so that's, that's my method. Fair enough. Well, hopefully Al Yurix has been listening to his hype music back there because he's climbing well, calm at the moment. And he's got through that initial part. Yeah. Now we can actually concentrate on the climbing. Really deciding to skip that rest that's uh, there underneath the undercling. Um, but maybe he doesn't need it. Now he's in that same section that got Mejdi. You can see him kind of debating, taking that moment to look ahead and decide what he wants to do. He's in the heel hook as well. Seeing switch it to a toe. Oh. Ooh. So we see a fall from Al, and he does look disappointed by that. At the start, there's a match. Yeah, he's going to be really comfortable on this move, making yeah. it look very easy. Yeah, simple for him. And he makes the reach look easier than Al as well, who had to get some momentum, kick off that. I feel like this route being um, look hard down low will actually really suit his bouldering fitness as well right now. Um, just because, you know, usually boulders being uh, more of a boulder myself like lower cruxes. And, you know, that section with the crimps is not too, too high up the wall, so I'm sure he'll be psyched about that. Yeah, he'll still have something in the tank when he gets there. This part of the wall hasn't really caused too many problems for the athletes at the moment. 
Yeah, most people get really comfortable as soon as they have a stem like this. Um, when you have your feet between two pillars like that, you uh, can really take a lot of weight off your hands. I think we'll get another chance to do that in a minute because the rest is coming. You can see it, that blue hold on the purple volume. Easy work from him as he gets the high heel in. Yeah, um, looking super comfortable so far. Yeah, easily out to the block, Prim. He'll come across, drop under, and have a rest, but he doesn't look tired at the moment. And you can see him kind of messing around with the rope there to see which side he wants it on. Um, you know, a little different than Taisei did when he got all wrapped around there. That's really good rope management, which is another part of league climbing. So Yoshiki Ogata reaches high up to clip, and now this is where his teammate fell. These crimps, you've got to be precise. He chooses the bump method. Yeah, looking super strong through that. And going back to the toe hook. I think placing that toe hook later is actually really important. I think what we saw from Al was he tried to flip the heel to a toe when his hands were already to the left, uh, and it just makes it a little harder to put in a good spot. So yeah, Yoshiyuki making it through, but looking a bit tired, so I'm sure he's gonna be fighting here. Look how bad those slopers are. They're not, sorry, the crimps are. They're slopey crimps, not just straight edges. So he clips above his head, and he's in second position at the moment, which, whoop. Well, if he stays that way, his best has only been fourth up to this point, so that will feel good. 3.47, you can see our clock on the bottom right. That's how long the athletes have to complete the wall, but well, I don't think time's going to be an issue here. Yeah, you have a six-minute time limit, um, and then only to break ties are when they use time. So, Just with a little toe scrub on the wall to stop that swing a bit. Yeah, he found a really good little rest there um, just before that section, which might be really crucial with how hard these next dishes look. Oh. Oh. Came into the side pool with a left hand. So, three Japanese athletes done. Satoni Ishida, the fourth. He's in the hot spot at the moment, but yeah. Yannick Flo will be looking to beat him. Yeah, Yannick taking no time to get on the wall. I noticed that during semifinals as well. He is not one to look at the route again. He knows what he's going to do, and he just gets right on. <laughs> And he is one of those, maybe a bolder specialist, we should say, but he does climb quickly. Yeah, I, I don't really want to call him a bolder specialist after him making both of these lead finals in yeah. a row. He made lead finals last weekend in Innsbruck as well. And so, um, yeah, I, I didn't know he was this good of a lead climber. It's pretty impressive. I think it's one of those things as the Olympics comes closer, we're going to see everyone starting to do the whole season. Yeah, the level of everyone this year, I feel like, especially in lead, has just completely leveled up. Um, you know, so many women and men were just getting to the head wall on both qualifier routes, which I feel like we've never seen before. Yannick skipping the stem rest here, going back for it. <laughs> yeah, he's not that much of a boulder yet. He's got the rest in, good flexibility as well. All right, now with the heels, he'll get the high clip. Something that's interesting about the Villar wall is that um, all of the clips are long draws, so they're a little bit more tricky to clip than just a, you know, a single, like shorter care, uh, quick draw. Uh, they swing around a little bit more and they can get out of your, your grasp a little bit more easily. <laughs> yeah, slippery things. It's definitely something you consider before getting on the wall and take that time clipping. Yeah, it's true. And we've seen some really dramatic moments over the years of people not being able to clip. It's, it's, ah, it's one of the most tense things in sport. I honestly think it is when someone struggles. Yeah, nothing makes you feel worse when you're on the wall when the clip swings away from you and you uh, don't get to clip it and you have to wait again you know, for it to swing back or something. Yeah, here he is in that cruxy section here. Yeah, he's got a low left heel, which he isn't giving him the reach. Looking really chill uh, until this section, so switching it to a toe hook, which gives you that reach all the way to that next black hold. Yeah, and that left heel's been rammed in down the bottom all the time. Now he switches it into a toe. It think, should be through clean. Yeah, I think that next hold must feel pretty good after that section, because uh, both him and Yoshiyuki got there, and immediately you can see their body language just relaxed. Yeah, breathe yeah. for a sec. I wonder if he'll take the same rest that Yoshiyuki took here. He doesn't seem like too much of a rester. Oh, found a knee bar. That's quite oh, yeah. good. So you can see he put his right knee between the crimp and the volume. Maybe not the best one, but those are hard to find on, on uh, World Cup routes especially. So. They are, and it amazes me how the athletes find it as well. So often they find one where they really shouldn't be, or it's just a different position they're yeah. in. So Yannick continues. He's in third at the moment. Crosses into the first of the bad dishes, and they want to move fairly quickly yeah, through this. If he gets this hold, he'll beat Yoshiyuki, so now he's in that second position. Looking really good, and this move will look familiar to anybody who watched 
semifinals because they had that same right toe hook move over to the right. Well, he got it in yeah. for a moment, then dropped it out. You'll also see this where typically as soon as the athletes hit the head wall, you can see them relax just because you're suddenly not having to hold your body off of the overhang anymore. Uh, and so usually you hit the head wall like this and are just slightly more comfortable. He's pressing up now, trying to get into the rest. He's one leg movement away, really, to be able to breathe a little bit. Oh, but he didn't get it that time. Yeah, kicking the foot up. Usually you do that if you're just a little not mobile enough to get the foot up slowly. Oh. Yeah, really fighting through that section. They must be pretty bad and not okay. sweating as much or something. See, I heard something entirely different. Really? Yeah. I, maybe people are just <laughs> spreading some rumors, but I made that jump was a little hard. But. I heard that it was, uh, I can't remember which metal, but a metal in there that helped muscles in some way. Really? So maybe similar to the nauseous thing, but that's what I was told. It was kind of like a Yeah, interesting. A boost. Maybe there's just a couple different uh, rumors going around about what they are, but... I love um, it. I don't really either, want to find out the truth. So either honest. way, uh, they know something that we don't, I think, so... Yeah. Uh, I need to get me some anyway. So up he goes through the initial part. Well, now doing a different method through this section than we've seen the other men do. Um, I think he went left hand to the black volume, which nobody else has done. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's crossing under and pressing, chalking up. And it's about a minute through that, or 45 seconds at the moment through the bottom part. Yeah, climbing maybe a little tentatively through this section. Yeah, I think it's he needs to get properly into the climbing and then he'll stop sort of being nervous perhaps and exactly. just get on with it. It does seem um, like this, this route gives you no time to relax at the beginning. You know, you get through that first jump and you're nervous about the jump and then as soon as you do that, you have to do this kind of awkward section. Um, and it's not really until you get into that stem rest between the two black volumes that uh, you really get that first ability to chill for a second. Well, there is the chill. He isn't making it look too chill yet, but there finds the better position. Gets the heel locked in. And there are some jibs on those, um, like small screw on holds on those bigger pinches, which we couldn't really see from the other angles. So they are maybe slightly better than they look from this angle, but uh, still bad. Yeah, where well, well, we're sitting, it just disappears, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it becomes black volumes. This is a cagey start for Satoni Yoshida. I'm definitely climbing pretty slowly. Maybe he'll get into the groove here. You kind of have no option but to try to in this next uh, crimp section. Yeah, that's it. Just gradually steps it up from that awkward beginning. So he stood up underneath in that good rest. Amazing how relaxed he's looking, considering how uh, terrible the right foot is. But now he's up, standing. And here's the crimp. Now, I'm interested here because we've seen so many different methods through this. Yeah, I think definitely the, the, what you have to do is get a toe hook on the right side in order to reach that next hold. So we'll probably see him switch it, going for the bump, and then probably putting a toe hook in. Yep. There it is. So no real problems for him. Read that well. Into his flow a bit more now, I think. Oh, campusing Choosing to up. campus that section. It was super strong. It really is. Remember from the other shots how bad that right, yeah. that black hand, uh, yeah. the crimp is. Yeah, he's definitely looking a little bit more comfortable now. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of missing that clip. Those, those long draws just make it so hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's looking a little bit more comfortable sometimes. As soon as you get into the more climbing sections where you get to actually go kind of left, right, left, right, move a foot type sections, that's when you start feeling comfortable, uh, which is sometimes a bummer because it's usually when you're tired from the beginning of being uncomfortable. Yeah, it's when you want to have, be fresh, isn't it, and enjoy exactly. it. I love how the route setters have created a corner in this lead route, or kind of a corner anyway. Oh, but he misses the crimp, drops wow. back down. Holds it, which, that was crazy. It almost looked like his foot just fully kept him on there. Yeah, They're really fighting. Locked in. Wow. Camming against the wall's surface. Now has a good heel hook again. What a fight for Satone here. <laughs> yeah, that says it all, really. <laughs> Knows how close that was. So into the side pull. Cutting loose again, immediately back. Oh. And this is the slope up. Third position. <laughs> this first move. And he does. Comes yeah. across. Didn't even really go for the, the swinging foot method. He uh, just jumped. Yeah, a little skip and he's in. So. I love how stoic Colin is while he climbs. Uh, you know, he doesn't really make you question what he's doing at any point. Yeah, he's very, very solid. 
So Colin on the blue pinches. Yeah, making quick work of this first section. He's got great grip strength and he's looking in powerful form at the moment. Yeah, I honestly don't know which type of hold Colin likes the most. It was funny, last weekend he was having a little bit of an identity crisis after he won bouldering because he was like, I've always thought of myself as more of a lead climber, but I guess maybe I'm a boulderer. <laughs> and then, of course, he won lead, and I was like, man, don't have to have an identity crisis anymore. Uh, I guess you're just good at both. <laughs> or it's going to mess him up more. I mean, he's just going to be right in the middle, no, yeah. not knowing what to do. And look at that resting position, bicepy move. Yeah, just looking casual. I feel like you can never tell what he's thinking on his face, uh, especially while he's climbing. He always seems surprised when he gets a good result as well, like it sort of happened to someone else, which is quite a nice reaction to have. Yeah. He's going with grabbing the hold here. Some of them, I feel like, grabbed the volume, but it was hard to tell. That's the first time we've gotten that angle and really gotten to actually see what the hold is on the bottom side of that volume. And Colin not really resting down low. Looking good at the moment. Yeah, you can see how just much how much he just relaxes into the position. So he'll grab a hold, and you'll just see his whole body relax into it, um, which is so important on these climbs. Going straight for the bump, not the toe hook. There we go. Yeah, everyone's done that, haven't they? I think it just it makes sense to start going, and then you realize you need that support. Yeah, I think you know that you're going to do this hard cut move. Oh, that's one of those moves that. It just looks ridiculous, and I know it's easier for them, but <laughs> it looks insane. Yeah, it's funny. I bet they're they're pretty psyched once they have that right hand hold, and then to get that left hand hold. But uh, especially after that last section of bad thin crimps. There's that knee bar again. Yeah, doesn't look too good, but it probably takes at least a little bit of the the weight off your hands, which is really the key in these in these climbs. It's just finding how to be comfortable in these uncomfortable positions. Well, this is where the serious part of the route yeah, starts now. Approaching the next crux for sure. So Colin Duffy, fifth at the moment. Chalking up between, looking really good on these dishes. Yeah, come on, Colin. And that's the move that we saw Satoni fall on, and Colin locks in the toes. Yep, really important toe hook move there. As soon as you get that, you can just see them relax again. Right, clips in. He's a few moves away from a potential rest on that left hand he's holding now. Look at that foot position on the right, hooking his toes over. Chooses to drop down before he commits to the head walk. That's yeah, a pretty good right foot, but this mantle move does look really awkward, and um, then getting that foot up looks hard. So I think as soon as he gets that, we'll see him relax a little bit again. Yeah, hip flexibility needed here as he stands up, agonizing slow presses. Yeah, you can see him really trying hard now. Right, that's the right foot up to match. Now he'll be able to sit down on that right foot if he can find a position. Yeah, pretty shallow pocket there. Oh, foot slip. It's so blind though. Um, Someone sent me a fact, but I haven't confirmed it. I thought you might know, but uh, <laughs> maybe not. No, I think he was working in the Harvard lab. Ah, so there we go. Yeah, you okay. can see he's looking at the mantle, but he's going to go for the jump. Yeah, he's a tall man. Yeah, there we go. Launches for it. Now, Jesse is interesting because recently anyway, he's just had this thing where you think he's falling off. He must be. And then he continues just grinding away at the moves. Yeah. Like I said, he has one of the best fights of, I feel like, anybody I've ever seen on lead. Um, and it's really cool to train with, too. It really makes you want to train harder. Um, so I've been really enjoying climbing with him in Salt Lake City and then also here while we've been in Innsbruck and stuff um, just watching how he trains it's just so impressive he's somebody who trains so hard and uh, you know it's been paying off for him which is really awesome to see yeah, he's looking in great form he was timed out of the semi-final run earlier yeah let's hope we can see him fight here will the route be suited to his abilities I think he does really like crimps so I'm hoping that he does like this next section and he's quite good at heel hooks and finding those rests. So, looking like he's climbing a little faster. Um, getting through this first section fast is definitely important because he's so good at those rests. So if he can spend more time at those rests, that's gonna be really important for him. So climbing these other sections faster is, is good so that you can spend more time on those rests. Shakes out as he comes to the crimps, reaches up with the rope, gets in. So he's through the relatively easy section of this route and now from, that's full commitment after the rest. Yep. So Jesse Grouper, a last male athlete out on the stage. No one topping this men's route out. 
so and far. We've seen two people get to the head wall. Um, but yeah, there's these two tricky sections through this next bit that you have to really get through in order to then be able to fight on that head wall. And when I'm saying head wall, I guess I mean the very top of the wall for, for those who don't know. Yeah, where, where it changes angle. So crossing under, I, yeah, it must be, although he read it with Colin, so maybe yeah. both saw that. Yeah, you can kind of see just as soon as you get through that, you just relax a little bit. Um, so that was really well done on Jesse's part. Are athletes spooked after last weekend in Innsbruck? How many people fell low? Are they now giving more consideration to the bottom of the route? You know, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, you look at each route and take it as it comes. Um, We're just watching Jesse here thinking about the bump, but he's going to drop all the way down to the rest. Well, he's not, so he goes again. Yeah, left heel hook. He was missing that on that last go. Gonna go for the bump now, looks like. Oh. Yeah, switch it to a toe hook. Yep. He looks really comfortable on crimps. Um, also, just as a side note, he's one of the best humans that I know. Really, really nice guy. Um, you know, incredibly smart and wants to do a lot for the world and the community. So he's just a really amazing person. So I, like I said, it's really cool to see him doing so well. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. Well, he is doing well at the moment. And that, that's the face that always gets me because I think he's going to fall. And it just is his try-hard face, I think. Yeah, he's just focusing, I think. Um, you know, having climbed with him in, at the KI last week in the Clutter Center in Innsbruck, where the competition was, uh, you know, watching him on those super, super hard routes, um, you know, it's pretty impressive to see. Honestly, all of these guys, <laughs> it's pretty impressive to see and nice to know what's possible, you know. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think we're seeing more and more the comp scene start to uh, give us an idea of what's to come in the outdoor scene, maybe. I mean, the level of these athletes, if they get a chance within the schedule to get outdoors, they can do amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. So Jesse has the knee bar locked in, and he looks probably the most comfortable of all the athletes we've seen using that so yeah. far. Again, the slowest athlete, I think, to get to this point. He only has two minutes and 20 seconds left. Um, but there's not really a lot of pauses through this next section. So kind of debating between heel hooking on the hold or heel hooking the volume there. He chose to heel hook on the volume. Going to move it up now. Yeah, I think this is where the Jesse Groove but fight begins from this moment on. Cuts loose, high left foot up to the last yeah. of the dishes. He gets this toe hook in. I think he'll be looking really comfortable. Oh. It is easy for him at the moment. It's looking yep. good. Looks really good there. Hasn't got that clip now, does. Yeah, you can see catching that swinging long draw. <laughs> He is taller than the other guys we've seen get up here, so I'm wondering if he'll feel comfortable once he gets pressed up in here. Um, really only needs a couple more moves. Uh, I believe he's secured. No, not quite. He's right you on the edge of the him, medal. Yep, getting that foot on that foothold, which is really important. I think when Colin switched his feet there, he um, missed the foothold and was just on the sloper. So. But he's going to have to foot swap at some point or stand on that yeah. sloper. And now he foot swaps. Yep, you can see getting the rope out of the way. That's super important. Looking really good. He just needs two more moves in order to. Oh, oh Jesse Gruber falls into silver. Eventually coming unstuck. But keep an eye on Mejdi. Well, we, the athletes are coming on stage now for the flower ceremony. The podium will come later, but this is a moment for them to celebrate with the crowd. And Tai Saihama, he is called forward from the throne to the stage. Fist bumps all round because the man, the focused man in the middle there, did more than enough for victory here tonight. Brilliant.